and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with my daughter and I'm going to share with you her birth story. Now she's almost a year old so she's pretty wiggly. Can you say hi to the camera? She's not going to be here the whole time but here let's give you a cracker so you sit still. Very wiggly baby. <laughs> so um, this month marks a year since I had her and I've just been kind of reliving memories of how it was before and basically if you can't stick around for the whole story um, my birth story in a nutshell is her birth was two and a half hours long. I had no epidural and I pushed for 20 minutes. So this is a non-scary natural birth story. When I was pregnant with her, I remember I really enjoyed watching these videos and some of them were really freaky actually and they really scared me. So this is a positive one and I feel like there's actually a lot of positive ones out there and you just don't hear about them because they're just not as maybe captivating or like horrifically interesting. So this story is for those of you out there who are worried about labor and what it's going to be like. Now my daughter is actually almost a year old so you're probably thinking how can you even remember all the details accurately and all that stuff which brings me to my first tip. I think you should definitely journal your birth as soon as possible afterwards. Believe it or not, I was journaling and I'm not even a huge journaler like oh my goodness I can be really sporadic about it like it's not the way I process my thoughts or anything like that but I am very nostalgic and I like to remember memories and I'm so glad I actually was writing in my journal while I was in labor <laughs> and so it's like in real time in here it's so interesting to look back and read and just like my thought process and everything and so yeah I'm really glad I have it but let's jump into the video jumping back I was never like the baby type who was like all excited to have a baby and like that was just my life goal. I was a teacher for about five years before we decided that we'd like to start a family. So I wasn't like super excited about changing my lifestyle. I love teaching and I love being just me and my husband. We were married for four years before we had our baby. So I really enjoyed all that time that we had together and I didn't want to rush into anything because I knew once you're a mom, you can't ever go back. But once I was pregnant, I was really excited about it. Yeah, I just can't believe we didn't do it sooner now. Actually, I'm really glad we waited. <laughs> So I had a pretty easy pregnancy uh, up until closer to the end. They were starting to monitor me. I wasn't gaining very much weight. I hardly showed very much at all. I only got kind of cute, I thought, until the very end. For the first seven months or so, I just felt like fat. And so um, I actually kind of enjoyed being pregnant in the eighth and the ninth month because I felt like I finally looked, you know, pregnant. I felt great through the whole thing, pretty much. But they started monitoring me closer to the end because I wasn't gaining enough weight and I was measuring small and I was measuring smaller and smaller and they thought maybe the baby had stopped growing. It was my first pregnancy so they had nothing to measure off of and we should have just known it was going to be fine. Like me and my husband are not huge people. I'm 5'5 five five and he is just under 6 foot. So we weren't going to have huge babies to begin with but they just wanted to be sure, I guess. I am gonna have a few lessons that you can learn from my story throughout this whole thing. So I guess that's my first one. Don't let the doctors scare you, especially if you are a first time mom. I really did love my doctors, but I felt like in some ways they were just being like extra picky and careful, but I didn't wanna have anything on my head and I didn't wanna have any regrets later on because I didn't do any of the screening they recommended or things like that. So I pretty much followed the doctor's advice. You're we getting extra ultrasounds, um, I think every other week there at the end just to see if the baby was fine and the fluids were fine because it seemed like it was pretty small. But in the end she was six pounds, seven ounces, and that's completely normal. Um, so it all worked out great. So I really enjoyed being pregnant up until my due date and then it kept going and going. And I always said, I'm not gonna be a grouch if I go past my due date, at least I'm not having a preemie and all the preemie medical bills and stuff like that. So. Yeah, it was easier said than done. My friend actually had her baby on my due date, and so that was kind of hard. And then um, on top of it all, I was just worried, like, is the baby going to be okay and all that. And I'm just a worry wart. I know I'm not supposed to worry. Um, I know God has it under control, but it's so, so hard not to. So moving this story along, I had a doctor appointment a week after I was overdue. And so we went into the doctor. We did have our hospital bags packed because they told us to be ready just in case things didn't look good with the ultrasound and they had to start labor. So we went to the doctor's office. The non-stress test looked completely fine. All the body measuring that they did, that looked great too. But the fluid was 5.3 which is technically fine, but anything under five they get worried about. So they said they were gonna have to send me home and make sure I drink lots of fluids and then come back later that evening or the next morning and be screened again to make sure everything was fine and that the fluids were okay. And that if that wasn't fine, they'd probably induce me anyway. This whole time I was terrified of being induced because I thought if you get induced, then your body's probably not ready. And then if it doesn't work, they had to do a C-section. I just did not want a C-section if I could help it. But then in comes a doctor, she came flurrying in. And now my whole story is completely positive. I think for the most part, everything went really well. But this part was a little weird, I thought. The way the doctor just 
said it and talked to me. She said, no, she thinks I should be admitted and that I should get induced and get this baby out. It's already eight days overdue. It's not doing anything good in there. Why would I keep the baby in there? It could just die. And she actually said like the baby could die. And she like said it very bluntly like that. And I was just like, what? You don't just tell a mom that's about to go into labor that her baby could die. Oh my word. Anyway, but I found out a little backstory later. They actually had three babies die on that unit in the past week. And that doesn't sound very good for the hospital. The hospital I went to was very reputable. So it wasn't like malpractice or anything, but yeah, they were just a little shook up, I think over that. And so they were trying to take a lot of precautions and make sure that nothing happened to the baby. So they left the room and we prayed about it for a little bit. And at three o'clock we decided, okay, we are gonna do this. So they said, go home, pack any last minute things you need, come back this evening and we will give you a little bit of meds that should start labor. Anyway, so we started driving home and then like five minutes later we got a call back that said, hey look, we are really slammed right now. We just had one jacuzzi room open up. If you want it, you better get back in here right now because we can't guarantee another lady's not gonna walk in the doors and want the jacuzzi room. And I really wanted a jacuzzi room because I was trying to do a natural birth. I heard that the water can just like really help labor and help the pain. So, yep, we turned right back around. Remember, I said we already had our bags packed, so that was fine. As we were walking into the hospital, I was feeling really nervous. So I started quoting Psalm 139 where it says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising and that whole chapter. And so I just quoted that as we walked, just calmed me down a little bit. So that was great. So I felt like going into the hospital, I actually felt a lot calmer than I expected. But yeah, everything was just happening quicker than we thought. We got there, they checked us in, they did some monitoring, and then my husband went out and grabbed Chinese. <laughs> Yeah, why did I eat Chinese before I had a baby? That seems kind of crazy. But, so we were eating Chinese, and I kind of was having a little bit of cramping while we were eating supper, but I didn't really think much of it because it kind of had been happening here and there before. Um, I never really had Braxton Hicks, but I'd have random cramping here and there. And so I did feel that, but I didn't really think anything of it. As we were getting ready just to go to bed and all that stuff, we could hear like a lady shrieking in the distance. and uh, It was just so unnerving. I was like trying not to be worked up. I just kind of kept it in the back of my head. So I took a shower and got in bed. At eight o'clock, the doctor came in to check me before giving me um, some Cervidil. She was gonna give me Cervidil to kind of soften me up and get things moving. And hopefully it would kind of work overnight and then the next day I could kind of go into labor. So she came in to check me and I was actually already three centimeters and before that I was barely even one. So that was so encouraging to me like, oh my word, maybe I'm actually going to labor on my own. And then I can't remember what she gave me, but she did put something in me that was supposed to just like kind of soften me up and that kind of thing. And then I was supposed to go to sleep. So she left the room and that was that. And so that's when I sat down, I was journaling everything that was happening and I was in bed, blah, 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 blah. And then I just was gonna get some sleep because the next day I was gonna need all kinds of energy, I thought, to have this baby. So I was trying to fall asleep. I was hooked up to a monitor because you have to do that if they give you Cervidil or whatever it was. And I had some fluid in me too. And so they could see everything that was happening on the monitor. And so I was just like getting really, really like crampy and like, oh, I was writing. Let me read what I wrote. This is so funny. It cracks me up. They said the plan is to sleep until morning and then they'll do the next step to keep things moving. At this rate, though I wonder if it's not actually happening on its own. I hope I don't have to get Pitocin. Right now it feels worse than ever. I can't imagine how bad it's going to get. I would say my pain's at a four to a five, but I probably have no idea. <laughs> anyway, it was starting to get really uncomfortable. And I just wanted to, um, I just like, I cannot sleep. At nine o'clock I felt like pretty awful and I was decided I'm gonna ask for something to help me fall asleep because I, how am I supposed to sleep through this? It just hurts too much. And it never made any connection to me that maybe I was going to labor or anything like that. So the nurse came in and she's like, wow, you're having contraction. I'm like, oh, really? So that's what a contraction feels like. I had no idea. Anyway, so she gave me some, I believe it was Benadryl, which they don't give Benadryl to you unless they're not expecting the baby to come for a while because it could kind of make the baby sleepy and that kind of thing. So they'd only give that towards the beginning if they're going to. So they gave me some Benadryl so that I could sleep, but I could not sleep. And for some reason, like, <laughs> this is the dumbest thing. My friends will think I'm nuts and I think I'm nuts too. I actually was counting my contractions at that point when she told me what they were. Um, I could actually feel them coming and going. And I had like about 30 contractions in my bleary mind. That's what. I was counting um, between nine and 11. Yeah, I didn't fall asleep at all during this time, um, but I did remember feeling, I felt so good in between the contractions. Like I would just be praying, thank you God, I feel so amazing. Oh, this feels so good. And then boom, another one would come and I would just get through that one. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how it went from nine to 11. And that was like 30 contractions in all, <laughs> according to my counting, I guess if that's accurate. 
and I just had to go to the bathroom so bad. And so they helped me up. I had to have this IV monitor thing. So I went to the bathroom and when I was in there, I had like the worst pain I would say of the whole thing. It felt kind of like, it sounds really awful, but this is how I described it to my husband. It felt just like, like a snake coiling up around my back and like squeezing me and almost getting all the air out of me or something. But, okay, that sounds terrible, but it was temporary. You can get through something that's temporary and it would like, and then it went away. And then I felt great again, you know, in between contractions, I felt amazing. I got back to the bed and I, it just was, that was terrible. And I'm just like, oh my word, if I have to do this all night and all, like I was expecting this to go on for 18 hours or whatever. And I'm like, I, I just don't know if I can do this. I'm like, I'm gonna ask them if, to check me, see how far I'm dilated. And if I'm not gone very far yet, then I will just ask for an epidural because I just can't make it through like a whole bunch of hours like this. I don't know where Josh was this whole time. I was like in my own little world. I don't know how, if there was lots of nurses in there. I don't know. I think it was pretty much an empty room at that point. They weren't really too worried about me. And so they did check me and I was just like, if I'm like progressing, like if I'm at six or seven, then maybe I can keep going. Um, and guess what? I was fully dilated. They were freaking out. They couldn't believe it. So apparently when I was in the bathroom is when I kind of went into transition and um, like that was the most painful part. And yeah, so apparently that's when it was because they said I was 10 and ready to push. But here's the kicker. They had two doctors on call. It was September. For some reason they say September is like crazy baby month. And they told me that you're ready to push, but you're not allowed to push because the doctors aren't ready to come in and help you have this baby. Oh my word. So this is my next tip here. Um, pay, go to a birth class and pay attention to their breathing techniques. Cause I didn't really use breathing techniques at all up until this point when they told me that I can't push. And I just felt like I had to push like your body just knows. And you just, I just felt like I had to get the baby out and I'm just a really, I'm a really awkward person. This whole time I was so freaked out that I was going to like, going to go to the bathroom on the bed or something. I was so scared. And that's kind of what the feeling was. So I kept telling them, I have to go to the bathroom. I have to go to the bathroom. And like, no, no, it's the baby. It's the baby coming. You know, it's right there. Uh, anyway, my fears were fine. I, that never happened. And I kind of was pushing like just a little bit here and there just to help relieve some of the pressure a little bit, but nothing like really strenuous or anything like that. And like I would breathe and they said I had back labor, but I don't know the difference between back labor and regular labor, but they were pushing on my back and asking if it felt good. And I just was in like my own little bubble, which sounds really odd, but like the room was dark and my, I had my eyes shut the whole time, just like kind of in my own little trance. Josh says he was right there beside me. He said they were pushing on my back and asking, you know, does it feel good? And I would just like kind of moan quietly. And the moaning like helped me breathe better, I think too, just quietly to myself. They say it's really important not to scream or anything like that. And I don't even think I felt like screaming, like that would have took too much energy. I was just like really focused and concentrated on like, you know, just breathing through the pain. I was in my own little world. I don't know. It was actually kind of amazing in some ways. It's just, I can't really describe it. But finally on the 70th contraction, the doctor came rushing in and she said, you can push. And um, I know some people push for even shorter, but I pushed for about 20 minutes. And according to my brain and my memory, it took like seven contractions. And on the 77th contraction, my daughter was born. So I don't know how reliable that counting is, but for some reason it felt like a sense of accomplishment to like count each contraction. Oh, I survived another one. So my daughter was born. I could feel her head come out. And then when her shoulders came out, apparently ripped, but you don't really think about that. And they grabbed her and they, boom, it was happened so fast. They laid her up on top of me and she was all kind of messy yet. And they were patting her off. And she was kind of a little sleepy, which I think they blamed that kind of on the Benadryl because it kind of got into her. And if they would have known she was going to be born so fast, they probably wouldn't have given me that but um, she, she was born at 138, and if you remember, it was around 11 where it started feeling really painful. I guess that's how they count the two and a half hour labor. I don't know, I would say from start to finish, it went from eight to 130, but only getting into intense labor around 11. So it depends how you wanna look at it. But that was like the whole thing right there. She was born at 138, and I couldn't believe it. In my mind, yes, it was, it was painful, obviously, but in my brain, I was thinking I was gonna have to endure this and go through this for, you know, a whole day or maybe all night and the next day or something like that. And so when it was that short, it just felt so much better. And that's what I want you guys to remember too. If you're like really nervous about contractions, just get through one because you feel really good in between and then you get another one and then you feel amazing again. Like I was just so blissed out in between. I felt like so grateful and I don't know, it must've been the Benadryl or something or my tiredness, but I just felt like so at peace and like, I don't know. Definitely I felt God there, I think, in between contractions. And then during the contraction, you just don't think about anything else and um, it goes away. And I understand maybe my labor was a little different than some people's and 
I am kind of a little bit nervous for the next time because it probably won't go that easy. But I do want to remember how smoothly it did go for my first one so that I don't have to be so stressed out for the next one. And what's really funny is they handed the baby to me and the nurses were just standing all around. They just couldn't believe how fast it went and how for like a whole half hour I wasn't allowed to push. So technically she could have been born even faster. She could have probably been born at one if a doctor would have been available. Yeah, they just couldn't believe it and they were just like rehashing the story. It was really funny. <laughs> I'm like, don't they deal with labors all the time? And I just looked up at Josh and I'm like, well, that wasn't so bad. When are we gonna have another one? And the nurses just started roaring with laughter. They, I guess, never heard a lady say that after just giving birth to a baby. <laughs> Some people say they, after you have the baby, everything's worth it and you don't think about the pain anymore or anything like that. And I don't think I was really that way. Um, I just, I mean, I, I still remember the pain and stuff, but I felt like it was worth it. I mean, here was my daughter after all that work. So I'm not really sure how much you want to know about what happens after a labor, but pretty much they just dealt with the whole placenta thing, getting that out. I did have those contractions for like a couple days. Every time I was nursing, especially, it got really painful as like your uterus shrinks back to its right size. So that is pretty painful, especially since you know you're not getting a baby out of the deal, so it doesn't feel quite as worthwhile of a pain. But I just try to imagine myself getting skinnier and skinnier every time I felt the pain. And so for about an hour, like, we try I nursed her and they asked about the name and me and my husband looked at each other and we're like, we, we weren't for sure, for sure on the name. We're like, we'll look at her and we'll know. And he's like, yep, she looks like an Ivani. So her name is Ivani Sage, which means, um, it's actually a really old name. And so Ivani means lively and brave, and then sage, of course, means wise. So lively, brave, and wise. Another tip for you, I think, is yes, you should be prepared, but it's not going to be the way you imagined. Like, it won't be. There's no way it can. Like, you can't predict how it's going to be exactly. Um, and that's a fine. Have your expectations just to be to have a safe and healthy delivery. Um, just a few things that are kind of funny looking back. I made Josh Hall in, like, my pillow and my birthing ball thing, and we wanted that jacuzzi room really bad. Guess what? I never got to use the jacuzzi. I mean, the labor went so fast. And then we had all the fun of calling our parents and telling them, and yeah, it was just obviously we didn't get much sleep that night. <laughs> Um, and it was fine because I got to sleep during the day then the next day in between friends and family and feeding the baby I was actually really worried about the post delivery stuff like all the healing and that kind of thing and yeah um, It is kind of uncomfortable and gross and I mean you bleed a lot and yeah You don't feel the greatest the hospital can give you lots of stuff to numb you and things like that And so that didn't actually go very badly for me at all You're just focusing mostly on like getting sleep and your new baby and so it's just really exciting time I really enjoyed it. I kept waiting for like postpartum depression to set in because you know I'm not a baby person and I thought maybe I would be like overjoyed about this whole thing but like I didn't actually feel a lot of emotions at all like they say like when they put the baby up on you you just like feel this like immediate bonding moment with your baby this mama bear instinct and I, I don't know I just didn't really get a ton of feelings in general like not bad ones or good I mean I was proud I did I felt like superwoman I was like oh my word I delivered a baby, I can do anything. And so I did feel that, and I loved her, obviously, but I didn't feel like this savage connection or whatever. Like, I feel like we got to know her, and we're still getting to know her. I'm just like, wow, if I would've known how it all went, I could've saved myself a lot of worrying. It doesn't benefit at all to worry. So that's pretty much my story. I've been talking for like 40 minutes, so I'm hoping I can edit this down into like a digestible chunk. I probably won't be doing a lot more like baby story time telling type of videos. I have a vlog planned next week, and then I do have one more sit down video that I have planned for the end of September. If you're not into this whole baby center video stuff, um, don't worry, uh, I won't be doing this forever. I just am enjoying this time of looking back to September a year ago and just all the things that I went through. And, and I thought, you know, is there any point in me sitting here looking at a camera and just talking about myself for a whole video? But I feel like if I can help you to feel a little less stressed out and just feel a little more calm, I'd like to remind you that God has it all on control. And even if I would have had to be put on pit or have a C-section, it would have all worked out anyway. God would have been there for me. I'm just really grateful for his protection and the fast and easy labor. And yeah, I'm hoping for another one like that the next time, but you never know. So don't listen to those people that say your first time is always the longest and the hardest and it can be totally fine. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to know more about me, you can check out the other videos on my channel. I would love if you subscribed and I will see you next week.